Hello and welcome to this special edition of Tech24. Today we give you a tour of Europe's largest tech conference. Loeb brings together web entrepreneurs, investors, bloggers, thousands of people from 80 different countries gathered here in Paris. For this year's 10th edition, Loeb decided to fast forward to the future and imagine the next 10 years. And we got a chance to meet up with some of the innovators and visionaries who help shape the future of the internet. I don't think we'll have the internet in 10 years. It'll be obsolete. We'll be seeing a lot more products that connect the digital and physical experiences. The internet is going to be a lot less confined to the online space. With all the censorship of the internet, even in France, I'm not optimistic about where it will be in 10 years. The internet will be everywhere, so we have a digital world. Teleportation, flying cars. I think, I think going to the moon will be a possibility again. But I think the reality is, uh, if you think the internet's going to be the internet in 10 years, it's probably not. And we start this special with Géraldine Lemeur, who founded Le Web 10 years ago. Yeah, I co-founded it. 10 years. I co-founded it with Loïc 10 years ago, absolutely. Thank you how, for having me. How have you seen uh, the web change, evolve for this past 10 years? So Le Web has always been a platform for entrepreneurs. We started as entrepreneurs of the internet. We had internet companies. And, and today Le Web is, uh, is more than 3,000 people with VCs, with uh, media. And it's really a platform for success for startups and entrepreneurs. And what about the internet? How, how has that evolved in your opinion? Well, the internet now is not a thing that we use uh, uh, randomly. Uh, it evolved from laptop to mobile and, and it's in our everyday life. So it, it really changed our life, uh, our habits, what we do every day. And where do you think this will take us? How do you see the next 10 years? Uh, the next 10 years, maybe we won't see technology anymore. I, feel, I have the feeling that it will be so uh, inside our everyday lives that we won't even notice anymore. Thanks for that, Gérard Thank, you, Thank you so much. And now we're going to check if we're not going to see technology all around us anymore with this report by Julien Sauvage. This is the screen of tomorrow. It's smart glass. Part window, part touchscreen. The latest gizmo generating a buzz boasts all the standard bells and whistles, but it also calculates your house's energy consumption. The smart window is for your daily digital needs. Look, I can see a new tweet coming through. You can even use it to tune into your favourite TV series. Doing their best to cash in on this, channels are introducing features like ultra-connectivity. This little eye in the right-hand corner of your screen invites you to check out some extras on your tablet, a complete biography about those you're watching, and a link to buy their book. Interactive advertising is the reality of tomorrow. In the example presented behind me, there's the opportunity to shop with your remote control, which is great. But then we also have the chance to perhaps try something for free, get a sample or even a discount, which is always a good thing. Mounting competition from tablets and the like has also forced TV makers to up their game. Trying to stay ahead of the pack, they're set to introduce a new Ultra HD quality TV. It's expected sometime in the next five to seven years. I saw these little men, elves, and Christmas bells hanging on a tree. Augmented reality, another area making leaps and bounds. Wearing these French-made glasses, you don't need any screen at all to see Santa's little elves sneak in and drop off their Christmas presents. It's like they're really there. It's that well done. Companies are also improving connectivity in public spaces, with a little help from above. Street lights. We have a sensor that's adapted to the Li-Fi technology which receives the information from the streetlight and shows our position on the screen, so our location's connected to the light there. Eight sensors, four lasers, four cameras, with a pretty straightforward goal, driving. But not as we know it. Fully automatic, there's no need to hold the steering wheel. Perhaps the most ambitious proposal yet, it's set to be developed by 2025. We're now pleased to be joined by somebody who's been following closely the web for the past decades, Mr. Robert Scoble. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me on. 
Um, my first question to you is, what will the next 10 years bring us? What kind of future are we heading to? Well, I just wrote a book called Age of Context, which is about five things that are joining together. Sensors, wearable computers like this, uh, data, uh, data of all kinds, uh, social network data, which is going up. There's a half billion tweets a day right now. And location data, if you use Foursquare or Waze or Facebook check-ins, you know that you're adding a da data about where we are. You mix those five things together and you can build a new kind of operating system, one that knows if we're walking or running or shopping or driving, and then we can build experiences on top of that that take advantage of that. We don't yet have a lot of those experiences, but things like Google Now get us ahead and start looking at, hey, I have a meeting in an hour, I better leave because the traffic is really bad, right? That's the kind of thing that we can do because we have the data from these five things. You Now you've been wearing your Google Glass, you told me, for the past seven months. Uh, can we really connect everything? How far are we going to take this? A lot. Uh, you know, when I visit research labs like SRI, where uh, Siri and the Internet was actually developed, uh, they're showing me systems that can study your voice patterns and tell whether you're highly depressed or not. Uh, think about that. So soon we're going to with our wearables, we're going to be studied at a very deep level. We're going to be wearing sensors on our skin to study if we have cancer or if you're a, a diabetic, you know, what your blood sugar level is or what my heart rate is. There's already, you know, watches that are coming along. This is a Qualcomm watch, but uh, Basis has a watch that studies my heart rate as I exercise, right? And it's telling me stuff about that. So we're going to be very stocked, very studied, and that leads to a whole new level of privacy problems. You know, That's the, exactly what I was going to ask yeah. you. What about things that we don't want people to know about us? A lot of people worry about the camera on this Google Glass, but that's just a cheap cell phone-like camera. What's inside is a little eye sensor. That eye sensor is watching where I'm looking all the time and how big my eye is. It will know whether I'm sober or drunk. Do I want my employer to know that? Maybe not, right? Where does that data go? Who gets that data? What is it used for? There's a lot of un unanswered questions going into this next age because we're going to be studied at such a deep level. There's new 3D sensors. Apple just bought this company called PrimeSense uh, that makes a 3D sensor like the Xbox uh, One Connect sensor that can see you and can see you actually touching a product in a store and can say, oh, that person is buying a box of Cheerios. Um, that, data, who gets that data? Is that my data? Is that the store's data? Is that the Cheerio manufacturer's data? And are we ready to have that discussion? I think so. I think so. And we're going we're gonna to have it anyways because this world is happening and it's happening very, very quickly. Every year, Loeb has a tradition of bringing entrepreneurs from all around the world together for a startup competition. What they're looking for for the winner this year? An innovative project that will help shape the next 10 years of this industry. Mark Edwards went to check some of those projects out. This is the future, very excited for the next 10 years of the industry. And we've got the startups now. There are 16 startups. They've been whittled down from 800. So they've done very well to get this far. We haven't got a huge amount of time. So we're just going to sort of swing through and try and give you a pick of the best, if you will. Uh, what have we got here? Afri Market. Can you tell us quickly in one sentence what Afri Market's about? Afri Market is the first money transfer services enabling African migrants to send money dedicated to their fam family in Africa. Fantastic, fantastic. So sending goods all the way through, so making sure the money goes to the right people, or the goods goes to the right people. Apprentice? Apprentice is a marketplace to find private teachers. Private teachers, brilliant. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. Oh, I love this one before, Droid Translator. Unfortunately, I think they've probably gone for lunch at the moment. Uh, but uh, what they were doing is you could speak across the internet. So I could speak to somebody in China and it would translate it automatically and you'd be able to hear in Mandarin at the other end. That's amazing, but they're having lunch, fair enough. Uh, Afrogram, I checked this one out earlier on. This is very interesting as well. We have lots of fun people at France 24 who do uh, spend huge amounts of time doing graphics and that sort of thing. But for those who don't, don't have that horsepower behind them. Afrogram is able to create graphics in under seven minutes. That one is awesome. And we're kind of finishing off in 
this one, this is the one that really grabbed my fancy earlier on. Uh, I, I actually, I spoke to uh, Kamel just earlier on about IQ Intel Clinic. Now this is great. Do you ever find that sometimes you don't have enough hours in the day? Certainly not enough hours to sleep. As a journalist, most of us have literally no sleep. And this mask that uh, Kamel is about to show us uh, can hopefully be the answer to that. Kamel, where did the idea come from? Okay, so uh, I was a student of medicine and I was working for a full-time job and th there was no time for sleeping. So we came up with the idea to create a device uh, which allows you to sleep less. Put this on my head, but I mean, first, before I actually try it out, Camel, can you explain how it works? It measures your brain waves, so uh, we know everything about your sleep. So it first, uh, first of all, it could help you wake up at the most adequate moment. It would create a unique sleep schedule for you and monitor your whole sleep. If every, anything went wrong, uh, we let you know. So it helps me sleep better and blacks it all out? Perfect. Well, I tell you what, I'm probably going to go for a slightly undeserved nap now, having, uh, having gone through all of the startups, 16 finalists who've made it here, the future of technology for the next 10 years. Back to you, Annelies. That's all we have time for. Thanks for tuning in for this special edition of Tech24. You can keep the conversation going on Facebook or on Twitter. Our hashtag is Tech24. We leave you today with images of this 10th edition of Loeb, wishing them a very happy birthday and many more great editions to come.